Hi everybody, I'm Zane. This is Sailing Views, and I've got uh, Mark Crutcher here. He's from Kentucky, and he has unbridled sailing. Uh, I met Mark a couple years ago, racing Melges 24s up in, uh, where were we? Charleston, I believe. And I think Miami. Was it Miami? I don't know anymore. Yeah. Anyway, Mark's a good guy, great sailor. He's been around a lot, so I'm going to grill him with a couple questions and just see what he has to say. All right, so Mark, how you doing? Doing well, yourself, man? Oh, I'm making it through this little storm. Yeah. All right, so what age and when did you get started sailing? You know, at what age or how'd you get started? So my dad took me out on a Hobie 18 when I was probably 12, hmm. uh, outside of Fort Lauderdale when they used to rent catamarans and, and Fort Lauderdale back in the day before yeah. jet skis um, had taken over everything. And I was hooked. Uh, it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Sorry, language. Um, language, it, language. It, it scared me, but it, it was one of the most thrilling things that I had ever done. And I knew I was hooked. That was it, huh? So a Hobie 18, all right. Uh, who had early influences on your sailing? You know, obviously your father, but anybody else, anybody jump out helping you? Well, or? so my dad's a motorboater. All right. You know, that's he, he's gone the opposite direction. Um, there's a few guys that, that had early influences on me. Uh, David Hobbs uh, had a S291. Uh, a guy named Bill Root here in town that had a uh, career 290. One of the biggest ones is probably the guy that took me under his wing when I was in college at Eckerd um, down in St. Pete, and he had a trip 26. Still has it, actually. Still talk to this guy all the time. Don Reichel, okay. uh, volcano. All right, just yeah. a small eruption. Um, great boat, great crew. He's always he's always found the the best crew. But I've had a lot of boat dads that have really shown me the way. I got you. And that's kind of what, you know, got me hooked. You know, my dad liked to do the beach cat thing. But when it comes to boating, he'd rather be doing 20 knots to windward all the time. <laughs> and I get that. Yeah. So I, I, and I, and I'm down with that. It, it's fun going on his motorboat. You know, I'm an equal opportunity boater. Yeah. So. Go on a little bit of everything. I, I don't blame you. I do the same. Yeah. All right. So uh, when did you think you were good? Or when did you think, uh, or have you thought you were good? I mean, do you? Uh... I, I don't think I'm good. Okay? Oh, come on. I, come on. You're the king of Kentucky. Where I am good at is like setting the boat up. I have made some good calls. And I've got, and actually I, I say good calls, mostly lucky calls. Um, you know, it takes a lot of luck to do this game. Yeah. But setting the boat up and getting things prepared is where is where I'm probably the best at. And mm. I think that's that that's why there's a lot of there well, there's not a lot, but there there's enough people out there that, that wanna have me help set up the boat and make sure everything's running right and tuned right. Um all right. So uh, that brings me to the next question. What do you do for a living? Where do you do it? What do, what do you do? So I own and operate Unbridled Sailing in Louisville, Kentucky. And a lot of people think, yeah, Kentucky, whatever. But I'm about halfway between the Great Lakes and Charleston. So, and halfway between you. I, I, I can be to you. Well, you're a little bit longer. But still I, I can make trips so every trip is special to me mm -hmm. when when we when we take a road trip and i like that yep all right uh, so a lot of road trips so and, we uh, we do a lot of like a lot of vintage uh well not not necessarily vintage but special boats yeah boats that people have been handed down boats that are special to people and they really want to keep them in top-notch shape. I've been very fortunate to be able to pick which projects that I get to work on. Uh, not a lot of people get, get to do that. 
Um, we have done some like old Chris crafts and some old motorboats. We're, we're trying to get away from those right now, but you know, we've worked on boats from Harbor Springs, Michigan to, to, and they bring them to me uh, all the way down to uh, West Palm and, and Miami. Hmm. So uh, we do rigging sales, um, much like yourself. A little bit. Yep. And, uh, but we do a lot more sanding. Well, I don't know. You do a lot of sanding. I do a lot of sanding. <laughs> 90% of my job. We've is talked sanding. about a lot of projects. Yeah. So, um, all right. Yeah. I mean, that, it, it, it's a, it's a hobby that has turned into a profession and this is our 13th year in 2020. Uh, one of the weirdest years that Obviously. I thought we'd ever have, you know, yeah. the, in, uh, in on March 2nd, which is my birthday, I thought it was going to be like a banner year. And then the rug got pulled out on me. Yep. I remember talking to you, you were up in Harkin around that time frame and had all kind of game plans going, had all kind of ideas that everything was going to pick up this year. And then voila, the. Well, we went, I went to Harkin us. up in December to, to the Harkin school, ah. which was awesome. Yeah. Uh, one of the brands I carry. Um, and yeah, and, and then it just, uh, like March 2nd, when, when all the stuff started coming out, like I had a bunch of, bunch of owners pump the brakes or cancel orders all together. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm seeing things picking back up right now. Like we're figuring out how the new normal is going to be. Mm -hmm. So they're dropping off boats in the driveway. Yeah. And we're doing like a lot of, uh, had, like what we're doing with video conferencing, like this is what I need fixed. This is this, and this is yeah. this, um, it, it, it's tough because I can't like shake anybody's hand. You know, <laughs> yeah. if I saw you right now, Zane, I'd want to give you a hug. Yeah, you know? I know, I'm, but I'm that kind of guy, you know, <laughs> it, it's tough. Yep. All right. So, uh, what is your favorite boat to sail on and why? Cruising or racing? You pick, man, your favorite boat all around. It could be either cruising or racing or. So racing, I'm, I'm with you, uh, it has to be the Melgus 24. All right. Um, I, I've sailed S two seven nines quite a bit. B 25s. I love, but the, the Melgus 24, which I own, um, is, is probably the funnest racing boat. Yeah. Right. It is awesome. Also because I can put my kids like up in the front of the, up, up in the front of the cockpit and they have tons of space. Yeah. And they're and safe. where I'm sailing. Yeah the draft is right everything is right about it yeah. now if i had to pick a cruising boat i'd probably do like an s291 or an s2103 gotcha. um you love those s2s don't you it's a well you love those melgies don't you yeah yeah, yeah. um i i just think that it's a the interior is better i have two small kids and to be able to have the kids in the boat and be comfortable like overnight, mm -hmm. I, I'd need more than a Melgus 24. Because um, yeah, there's I, no cruising on a Melgus. The wife and the kids are not going to spend the night. No, there's no cruising on a Melgus 24. No, 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 no. No. All right. But they love day sailing it. And, and they don't particularly, like my wife is a great sailor. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't particularly want to spend overnights yeah. on the boat. So day sailing it, I mean, it lives on a trailer with the rig up. I dry launch it. Yep. I go sail it. It's way cheaper than having to slip in the water somewhere with power and all that stuff. I, I, yeah. It's the best boat for me right now. I got gotcha. you. That, that's why I like it. All right. Well, you've hit a lot of different places in your travels. Uh, what's your favorite place to sail? I'm going to do it again to you, racing or cruising. Either I'm or, sorry if man. I keep Either looking over or. there, everybody. Yeah. Zane is over here, but my camera is over here. Yeah, this we, is just a, a technology few technical, that we're dealing with. Uh, um, technical difficulties, but that's all right. So racing, I would probably hands down say Miami. God, everybody, um, I hate Miami. The 2016 Worlds was a highlight. 
mm -hmm. of my sailing career. We didn't do that well, but the I mean, there were what 120 boats yeah. and the the sailing out there was you can't beat it. No. Nope. Since then, even you know being invited to the Bacardi Cup, it's some it's some you've been down there. Yeah. It is amazing sailing down there. Yep. I also like Pensacola over by in your neighborhood. Yeah, I love Pensacola. So we used to bring the Flying Tigers down there. Yeah. Um, I cruising wise, I have been fortunate enough to ray or to cruise boats in some racing venues. So Coronado Bay in San Diego, mm -hmm. beautiful. My wife and I had a great time, and uh, honestly, Lake Garda is at the top of the list. I so, don't blame you. you know, we brought out German sausages, Italian wine, pizza. It, it was it was amazing. We chartered a Dufour 27 or something like that for the day. Yeah. And went out there, just the two of us. No racing. Just And it's fun. so deep out there, you can't drop a hook. <laughs> so we just lowered the sails. And, and drift around. At lunch mm -hmm. and sitting there and there's Malchicine right there with the big castle. It, it was it was amazing. Very nice. Um, All right, well let's keep moving on. Married her sailing instructor, so <laughs> she she gets to go sailing like wherever we go on these trips. Yeah, she's like we should go get a boat, and I'm like yeah we should definitely go get a boat. Yeah, that sounds like, yeah that's a great <laughs> and idea. And we do that. She doesn't like the racing as much. Which which is fine, mm -hmm. but we get to go get boats and, and get to go sailing, which is pretty awesome. Yep. Uh, Grand Cayman, you know, same same deal. Like we've gotten to do some cruising and some day sailing in some places, there which has been a blast. But Garda is probably, yeah. I probably put that number one. All right, I, I don't to doubt answer that. your question directly. Sorry. All right, so let's move on because this thing will take forever if. Uh... We go off on every tangent. All right. Uh, where do you see the future of sailing? Youth. And the youth. Yeah. Right. Uh, we don't, we're not feeding enough youth in the sailing right now. Um, I'm, in, I'm involved with a Sea Scout ship and would love to see more involvement with it. Yep. it youth. Yeah. If we don't get younger people in here, Zane, because you and I are roughly the same age. Yep. And I'm like one of the youngest guys in my club. Yeah. I might I, be the youngest guy in my club. I know that feeling. So. So, like that, youth is where we have to go to do yep. that. All right. So, what is your best uh, regatta or your best sailing trip you've had? I'm going to go back to racing or cruising. Um, hey, once again, I don't care, man. Just pick one. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to say uh, I've had a lot of fun. I used to, I used to work for the scouts. Yeah. And um, we, I ran a tall ship. I didn't run it. I was the sailing master. I was a captain and engineer, and I was a sailing mate master. We, uh, it, it was it was great times running that and picking up lobster and diving and everything else down through the keys. Uh, I've been through the Leward islands, the, the, the diversity of the wildlife down in the keys is unbeatable. Yeah. And that brings me back to South Florida. So I'm, I'm going to say like Miami, I mean, Charleston is also an amazing, like Charleston race week, we used to bring the flying tiger down there for racing and that's insane. Yeah. It's awesome. Yep, great um, sailing. Very Randy tight. Graffs and his group have done an amazing job with oh, that. Yeah. I, I wish we could be there right, right now, yeah. right now, but we can't. Yep. Um, we'd all need to be up there practicing right now, trying to figure out the currents. So we can know what to do. For well, the, we'd be uh, going world. into worlds right now, right? Just about, yeah. It'd be worlds right. like yeah, what, actually, on Friday. Yeah, actually, we'd be wrapping up uh, race week and starting uh, worlds and registration. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, we'd be like we'd all be down there. Yeah. Hmm. Hard to believe. 
All right. Uh, what's your worst sailing trip? The worst trip or adventure you've been on, you know, dealing with boats? Ooh. Um, bringing a boat up from Paris Landing, Tennessee, that I bought right before I got married, and the rudder snapped off. Mm. Inboard boat, O'Day 27, and I was well and truly mm, on the river. <laughs> and uh, I had to take the outboard off the dink and have a buddy come down and, like, I ferried out boards and built a platform on the back of it. And just so I could, I had, I, the inboard was running and then I used a little outboard off the dink to steer with. Oh, that sounds like fun. And then I had to dive in like November to put a new rudder in it. So uh, yeah, that, that, that was not fun. Yeah. That sounds cold, wet, miserable. Yes. Lordy, and, Lordy. and dark, muddy water too. So Yo, yeah, yeah, it was not, it was not good. All right. Well, with all your travels up and down rivers and lakes and pretty much everywhere, uh, what's the weirdest thing you've seen floating by? I'm going to do you better. I'm going to do two. All right. Okay. All right. So I have seen a porta potty rolling <laughs> down the river in the current. Okay. Uh -huh. And it took us a second to figure out what the hell it was. <laughs> like, what, why is it? And it come up, it's like a magic eight ball. Uh -huh. So every time the flat part would come up, you'd see it. Yeah. And then it tucked back under and then you'd see it pop up again. Uh, the other thing was a mobile home. A mobile home. Yep. Same river. <laughs> Must um, have been one heck of a flood then. A yeah. Different floods, but yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. It wow. was a... <laughs> You could there, salvage there's that. There's a lot of crap that flows down the river. Sometimes. Oh yeah, they all end up here in Mobile, so it's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all or, right. Or, or down in Nola. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. All right. So, what's your uh, best role or best job on a boat? You know, driver, tactician, trimmer, do flunky, snack this is maker. It's gonna be a long one. Mm. So my best role that I have been like paid for, again. I, I think that it's uh, probably set up and tuning and making sure that everything is buttoned up just right. Yep. Um, I have a lot of skippers that like sailing with me for tactician. They, I, I don't yell at people. There's a, there's a lot of people that do. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that don't. I've, I've done all the jobs. I've, I've started on the bow and worked my way to the back of the boat. And I guess it's a promotion or a demotion, really, if you <laughs> look at it from the Fordeck Union point of view. Yeah. I mean, that's a, yep. that's a tough one. But I, I would say setup is probably my strongest. All right. So you're the boat monkey. You get everything done. All right. That's, so, that's, that's why we're sitting here talking in my boat shop right now, man. You know? Right. right. All right, so on the water, are you aggressive, conservative? What's your sort of style? Um, I like to I like to be pretty aggressive at the start, and definitely stay in contact with everybody. But you can tack your way to the back pretty quick, and I'm. I'm a little conservative when it comes to that. Once, like, I I want to get out into clear air so you can call me conservative there like after the start yeah because i just want to clear out like i'll duck somebody easy just to get out there and and get clear breeze and see what we're up against right does that make sense it does it does um i try to go for clear air all the time i mean my whole game yeah, plan clear is just air is king. find me a way i don't care if i have to bang one corner or the other i don't care as long as yeah. i'm in clear air yeah, because one corner is going to be three degrees higher than the other corner, so right. might might as well go for, you know. Yep. Yeah, because every tack costs you more than that. So. Yes, it does. All right, so what's the greatest maneuver, you know, the best single maneuver you've pulled off? Like a mark rounding, a start, just something incredible. Um, two things. Uh, port tacking the fleet 
couple of times in the 24, which is the first time I did it as Helm when I owned the boat that like I've talked owners into like Port Tackham, you know, mm -hmm. but the first time I actually did it in my own boat, that's a mug is 24 that costs a bunch of money. Uh huh. That like it, it, it gives you that little tingle in your seat too. Little, doesn't it? little tingle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're always a little puckered up going, Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Let me make this. Yeah. yeah. Um, the probably the luckiest moment that I've had sailing, we're at the uh, Benetton 367 uh, North Americans on Lake Erie. Richard Reed, another uh, Melgus 24 guy, uh, Zingara, mm -hmm. was up there, and we had a huge override on our jib, general one, and uh, we couldn't we couldn't unload it with the secondaries. It was it was. It was well and truly messed up. Yeah. So we were like, we're going to have to cut it. We're going to have to cut it. We took a flyer all the way out to the uh, left-hand side of the course by the time we got it all sorted out. I was trimming Maine at the time. And a uh, bunch of great guys on that. Big electric cat. And, uh, and so we, I was like, I'm going to cut it in three two cut it and we tack mm -hmm. and when we came out of that tack man i think we got second in that race <laughs> <laughs> it was it was like a miracle happened i can't make that stuff up you yeah. know <laughs> i got you all right so what's the favorite project or your favorite program you've been involved in uh you know what's something good you've done i really enjoy the old race boats um I'm working on a Santa Cruz 27 right now. Yep, great boats. By that, the way. that we're doing, we're doing some really cool stuff with. Uh, follow our Facebook page on that. Um, Santa Cruz 27 restoration presented by Unbridled Sailing. All right. It's, it, it we're doing all Cusa panel on the inside with a carbon fiber veneer on it. It's, it's going to be. It sounds like it's going to be gorgeous. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful. Huh. Very so, nice. uh, the name is yet the name we know. I know the name, but I can't release it yet. I uh, gotcha. Um, but either it, way, it's the, the same. The, the name of the file is Operation Jewelry Box. Okay, bling bling. This thing I is hear gonna you. Be, it, uh, it is you, gonna be beautiful. Yeah, I'll guess the name, so you better not give me too many clues. I, I like right. uh, I like old boats with history. Yeah. I also like new boats. I mean, that's you and I own the same kind of boat. Yep. You know, we all also old, own, old, sorry, several of the others, own similar boats. old boats of the, uh, of the, uh, 24s. Yep. You're, you're way older than me. You're right. I'm old. Yeah. Yeah. You're, I'm 74 and you're like seven. So. Yeah. I'm nine, nine, nine. One of the, okay. one of the oldest yeah. things floating. So, yeah. All right. So let's move on to America's cup. Do you love it? Hate it? What do you think? Uh, you like the old 12 meters and IACCs, or you loving the uh, foiling? What do you think? I, Love it or hate I it? I think America's Cup has always been a hotbed of development. Yep. And I think it has to stay that way. It's not a. It's not a game that you and I can ever play in. Maybe, but mm -hmm. probably not. Um, I, I, I'm down with it. I like the foiling. Uh, I like the 72s. I really like that. I mean, that was super exciting. Yep. I think it was cost prohibitive. And those guys that are running that saw that mm -hmm. and knew that it was going to be cost prohibitive. That, well, that's why they did what they did. Well, these new boats are going to be insane, too. I'll be interested to see too. with the new, the new generation with the monohulls mm -hmm. to see what they do. Yep. Um, the, if somebody flops over, it's like game over. Yeah. America's Cup has always been a game of pass or fail. Mm. You know, they they press the limits. Uh, a friend of mine that that sailed for Connor, friend of yours too, said that the best uh, America's Cup boat is the one that wins the cup and breaks and sinks on the way to the dock yeah. after winning it. Yep. And you know who I'm talking about. Yes, so. I do. Yes, I do. All right. Uh, 
so what are your future plans for sailing? Uh, I know everything's kind of on hold for a couple months, and we don't really know what's starting up. But obviously, you've got projects in the works, you know, your uh, Santa Cruz or whatever else. What's your future got? What do you have? Well, I'm putting a die form rigging on my 24. Mm -hmm. um, I'm creating the turnbuckles, doing a few things on my boat. I've already paid the bill to put the boat in the water, which was kind of an iffy thing. Like, should I pay the, the slip fees? Yeah. I have a shop here that I could keep it like, eh, but I did. Um, and I, and I think we're going to, we're going to see a lull in the summer. Yeah. I think we're going to see racing is going to be a little bit different. I think possibly, uh, more pursuit races like reverse start races mm -hmm. or handicap fleets. Yeah, I don't think any of the one design stuff is going to go off the the way we think it is. Yeah, and again, I, going back to Randy Drafts and his crew, like he was, he knew that you know you, you can't fly guys over from Europe for Worlds in Charleston. You know they they knew that. Yeah, that was happening. So yeah. it, it there's going to be a new normal, but we're probably going to. We're probably going to figure out what that is. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of a lot of races in my area, you know, that should have already happened or would be happening now. They've all got moved back to, you know, June, July. And the problem is right now, that June, July, when everybody thinks everything's going to get started again, is going to be so booked up and full that, yeah, you know, I don't even have any idea where I would go. You know, just looking at a, a tentative schedule... I'm supposed to be in five different regattas at the same time. So, you know, I don't, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but it'll be interesting to see. All right. So, uh, what do you think of women's sailing these days? Do you think it's growing, getting better, getting worse, regressing, you know? Sorry, okay. I missed that question. Women's sailing. What do you think? Well, I, I sail with, uh, one other dude and two girls. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you've met Brittany that yep. sails with me. Yep. How's her uh, leg or hip or didn't she break a leg or something? Uh, hip, hip. Hip, yeah. Yeah. That's um, I, I think girls really want to do it. It's breaking that boundary layer of getting them in there is, is the big thing. Yeah. And that's where we as boat owners, like, because it, it's rare to find a female boat owner Mm -hmm. racing boat owner that'll yeah. that'll get into it but getting him in his crew i some of my best crew are yeah. are, are girls so yeah. i'm a firm, i'm a firm they, believer in having them on board that's for sure hell yeah well you met Brittany. i mean it, and it, you haven't met my other girl aaron i mean they're they're both yeah. awesome yeah like yeah. my my wife doesn't like to sail but she's like she knows Brittany and aaron she's like no those girls are like competitive, but like they, they want to go out there and kick some. Yep. Keep it PG 13. Sorry. Yep. yep. But they, they, they want to, you tail. know, they want yep. to go get it. So, yep. and I like that and, yep. and it's an outlet. And yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of more girls in sailing. Yep. I have a now seven year old and I, she may be, you know, future Rolex yachts woman. Yep, you just you know. never know. You never know. All right, so what's uh, what do you have as far as ideas on growing the sport? How can we help grow the sport? Uh, what can you as sailing do to grow the sport? What what can be done to help it? I'm um, I'm back to youth. Um, no comment on you as sailing, um, <laughs> but it, youth. Yeah, like, we have to have better youth programs and funding for like one of the things that I want to do is winter programs for at risk youth yeah. and teach them how to work on boats because the trade of working on boats is being lost. Oh yeah. And if we teach them that, then, then they can move into sailing. Mm -hmm. I met a great guy up in, uh, up, up in Harkin, uh, Lottie works for BAM. Mm -hmm. up at Oyster Ray Boat Shop, and he would not have had that program. He started working on boats, and he's become one of the best match racers yeah. <laughs> around. Just from 
working on boats, being around it, learning how they work, and then poof, right, and taking it gets it on the boat. Yeah. Osmosis. Yep. And, and that's how, and, and we can keep it like a year-round thing. That's that's what I'd love to do here. If we keep it a year-round thing. Yeah. And have kids sailing in the summer, using the boats, using and abusing the boats. Yep. And then, and then in the winter time, they can they can have an after school activity and come in there and work on the boats. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. That that's where I think we need to move towards because the the whole concierge business of you know having having somebody step on your boat and rig it for you and everything else and the owner doesn't need to know shit about it. Sorry, um, <laughs> that I think that needs to change. Yeah. I understand there are professional sailors out there. Um, I, I'm, I'm ranked on their scale, but I am not like I shouldn't be ranked with Jimmy Spithill. That, that, <laughs> uh, that, not many people know. should. Yeah. No. <laughs> so right. it's a tough one, and and getting people in the trade is the biggest thing, gotcha. and getting kids involved. And breaking that barrier of the country club kind of ethics. Yeah. Getting them in there into into more community sailing. That that's that's a big one for me. I gotcha. All right. So, what kind of uh, advice do you have for new sailors or people that are just new to sailing in general or, you know, novices? What what kind of advice do you have for them? I would say figure out what kind of sailing you want to do. So there's a lot of, you can do buoy racing, there's offshore racing, match racing, anything there's in the cruising, yeah. or there's, cruising, yeah. you know, that, and we're, I'm sorry, you and I are both like focused on racing, but there's, there's a lot of different kind of sailing you can do. Yeah. Figure out the worst boat owner is the one that doesn't use the boat. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. I have a <laughs> yacht club marina just slapped full of molding, sinking boats. So, yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, th those drive me crazy. All right, so anything else to add? You've uh, cranked out all these questions. Uh, what else do you have to add to this? Any uh, good advice? Any well, good words of wisdom to people? Or Use your boats. Don't buy... I, I didn't finish the last one, though, man. Oh, Come on. All right. You're well, me through. You, you can tie them all in together. I know, I know. <laughs> So I would not uh I would not buy the biggest boat that you can afford. If I if I was a prospective owner, mm -hmm. I would try to get them to buy a boat that they can afford. Yeah. You know, maybe they want that Catalina 30, but a Catalina 22 may look a lot better. Yeah. And then they figure out like, "Oh, I get seasick." Yeah, Catalina 30 ain't the right choice. Yeah. You know. And then they use that Catalina 22, their budget goes up, and they can make that Catalina 22 a lot nicer. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Uh, for me, of course, I'm always boat broke, and I go for the biggest and best I can afford and then have to nickel and dime the rest of the way. So Yeah, and tell me about it. I'm, I'm putting new, uh, new die form on the 24 right now. Yeah, I know. You quoted me. I, was, I, I spit my coffee out going, oh, okay, I can't afford new rigging right now. <laughs> Well, we'll we'll see what mine does because I I did the inner four stay and everything. Yeah. So all new turnbuckles. I'm going to open bodies. So yeah, I need to go to open bodies. I've got those Ron Stan speed ones, and I tell yeah, you, I, I, I jump boat to boat uh, a lot, and I'll be like, okay, six turns and three turns. I'm like, wait a minute. They're all like, no, it should be two and one. I'm like, huh? Wait a minute. Three <laughs> yeah. what? No one and a half. Yeah, three, yeah. Well, I, half. I get so confused on boats. I start just spinning things up, and everybody's like, what are you doing? I'm like. I don't know anymore. I'm like somebody else do the rig, man. I'm, you know, when you're swapping all the different boats and turnbuckles, sometimes I get lost. But, yeah. Okay. Well, anything else to add other than uh, all of that? No. That's it. I wish we could be racing against each other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, they were supposed to have a Dolphin Island race this weekend too. So. Oh no, kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody uh, was talking about it this weekend, but. Yep. Really? Yep. It's once again and postponed until June or July. I always wanted to do that race. Yeah, that's a fun one. You ought to come down. We'll have probably four uh, Melges at least. So So what What do you see? I'm going to ask you a question. 
All what right. do you see about the racing schedule getting compacted towards the fall? Uh, I just see it being nuts. And we're going to have to pick and choose our battles and where we go and what we do. Um, yeah. And I think it's going to be such... I, I sponsor a guy in October, and I don't I don't think Charleston is going to reschedule. No, I don't I think, think they are. I don't think they can get the permits. Everything, yeah, maybe. the permits. They've, they've got to deal with the, the Coast Guard with such a big group. I don't yeah. think they're going to be able to pull that off. Um, no, I... I'm, I'm with you on that. But well, like Pensacola. Yeah. Well, I know Pensacola is going to happen. The uh, Bushwhacker Cup is going to happen. Um, and actually, the Gulf the, the Bushwhacker. The, yeah, hey, man. Uh, the the Gulf Coast champs. I was trying to get out in Rush Creek, but they've kind of haven't gotten back to me on a, on a solidified date. So yeah, I'm just going to move. The, I'm going to move the Gulf Coast back, back to Pensacola. Days, yeah, and the Texas guys. You know, they haven't uh, been overly active uh, this no. past year. Um, and I feel like some of that's my fault because I've shifted everything from Texas to more of the east side of the uh, the Gulf Coast. So, that you know, that gives them a 20-hour drive. I'm sure not, they're not really excited about it. But, uh, like, so I tried to go to Texas, Rush but nothing Creek? happened. So, what was that? How far is it from Rush Creek to your club? Uh, about 13 hours. It's about what it is for me there. Yeah. From yeah. Kentucky. Yep, it's a, it's a haul. So, That's and and Zane, I, I will say like the the fair hopper guy that you put on. That that was that was great. Yeah, thank you. It wasn't the, me. The, there was a bunch of people working at it. You know, I had a bunch of people working at it. It yep. wasn't exactly ideal, but you know what? It was a ton of fun. Yeah. Well, what Every, wasn't ideal? I thought it was as ideal as I could make the it. Sailing was good. We didn't get skunked on any days. Yeah. You know. Yep. Well, I know yeah, a lot of work went into it. You did a it. hell of a job on that. Sorry, so, PG-13. You did a heck of a job on that. Yeah. Well, like you said, it wasn't me. I had tons of people to thank. You know, Scott Hartwell, Jennifer Vereen, Wes Stanley, uh, uh, Chris Dabney. I mean, there's just so many people I can't even uh, can't even name them all. You know, Hal Smith, uh, tons of people. So it was a great event, and hopefully I can do it again. I've just got to figure out a good time frame and schedule and things like that. But I think for now we're going to start trying to go to Pensacola a little bit and give them a little boost. All right. Well, with that, I think we're going to wrap it all up. So once again, everybody, if you stuck with us this far, this is uh, Mark from Unbridled Sailing. There you go. Uh, you can look him up online. He's got a good website. I know I buy all my instruments from him and a bunch of other parts and pieces from him. Uh, he's quick to deliver, very uh, open. He knows what he's talking about. And he can gladly help you out. So look up Mark at Unbridled Sailing. And once again, thanks for dropping in. This is Zane with Sailing Views. Over and out. Talk to you later. Thanks, Bye-bye. All right. Bye.